What's up, everybody? It's your favorite pointy-eared friends, favorite nerd. Today, we are looking at the fans' toys Quietus, which, of course, is their take on Cyclonus. And real quick, I got this from a new retailer. He goes by the Toy Guy, and his email will be in the description if you're interested. If you end up going with him, tell him Scully sent you. He was pretty good to me. Now, I just got back from TFCon. My goal is to have a TFCon if it teases the court up soon. I got a couple new types of videos coming because I got so much love on the sit down Saturdays while meeting and greeting folks that I think I'm going to explore the discussion stuff a bit more. So if you like sit down Saturdays, the good news is I got more stuff like that coming. And this sit down Saturday, I'm going to be talking about, a little spoiler for those who are watching this one, my first hand and in some ways third hand interactions with third party companies. I think you might be interested in it. So I want to start on these introductions talking about first impressions. Sometimes I do it and sometimes I don't do it and I need to get more consistent in that I feel. My first impressions were breathtaking. The paint is beautiful. The presence is outstanding. I love the certain exaggerated feels like how long and pointy those rabbit ears are and the same with the wings on the side of his arm. Strong presence, strong paint, good weight, etc. My wife, who doesn't really know anything about the quality of a toy, but she knows she likes them heavy, so to speak, picked this up out of the box the other day and went, ooh, this is a good one, without really manipulating it at all or seeing how it worked. So first impressions were outstanding. Now, that that's out of the way, let's talk about accessories. He comes with two guns, one for each of you. One has the purple kind of metallic paint on it. Looks fantastic. And the sculpt is, you know, very G1. Not a lot of love in the sculpt, but there is a ton of it. It's just very cartoony. It doesn't look as, you know, maybe as intricate or as... I don't know. I don't know what the right word is. Technical, as maybe I would I would prefer, but it does look accurate and it does look good. The second one has a fair amount of love on it as well. We have the metallic silver. We have the blue paint and the metallic black, or it might even be a gunmetal on there. And that looks good as well. And surprisingly, he holds both of those just well. And I say surprisingly because they do have that finish on them, but they do peg in just fine, at least on mine. And then he comes with two swords. They're pretty much identical except for their shape. One is obviously longer. And then they have this little scabbard type piece that just plugs into his back. And they have nice silver paint, metallic gold paint, metallic blue paint, metallic gunmetal paint, and more silver paint. So it's done up to the nines, and you get both. They both will peg onto his back, and he will hold them with tension, but obviously, you know, it doesn't peg in, but I don't think you should have an issue. Comes with three swap out faces. One has the gray chin paint, the others do not. I'm guessing that's due to an animation differences. And they all have the white paint, and then they all have the red painted eyes. They look very nice. I will say it doesn't appear to be, maybe it is, the red metallic, which they usually do. But they still look nice. One stoic face without the gray, one screaming face without the gray, one screaming face with the gray, and then on board was the stoic face with the gray, which I prefer because I'd like a little color breakup. And then you get for me, which is the money shot, which is the, the way that they did this, which I just can't praise them enough for. You have the IDW head sculpt. It looks tremendous, like the nose just screams Alex Milne. It just looks so good. Like I feel like that's one of his, you know, you can always tell this him by the shape of the nose kind of deal. The black around the eyes, the black inside the cheeks, the purple metallic there, and then his horns are... You can man maneuver them on this hinge. It's a little tight, so be careful because you can get a lot of torque there. But I just think that is so awesome and then you get uh, a separate set of horns if you want it to be you know before the damage was done kind of deal very thoughtful and then to continue with the idw theme you have the two sort of samurai looking thigh covers or armor with uh scabbards for your swords and then uh you know connection pieces to the figure itself unfortunately i tried to take the head off to show you guys what he looks like but the screw was in there so tight that i stripped the left screw trying to get it so I'm not going to be able to show you and that is a bummer but that peg is where these plug in the side samurai armor then lastly it comes with this target master the head is painted gold and red on the eyes which looks nice it's on a ball peg I think but the ball peg goes down into the body maybe you just pretty much get a swivel out of it which I think is fine you have a ball peg that goes into the chest that comes out to a hinge for the shoulder so you can get that out to 90 degrees and up further so no issues there all the way around no issues there bicep swivel on a ball peg that comes down to a hinge so it also acts as a double jointed elbow nothing obviously for the wrists 
You do have a waist swivel, but you kind of have to undo some of this stuff on the back in order to get it, but I think that's fine. And then you have T-jointed ball joints for hips, silver painted legs, they get you the full Van Dam and the full Monty. You have ball pegs on a hinge for the knees, which gets you a double jointed knee to get the leg all the way around, mainly for transformation. I just pop that off the ball peg because they are tight uh the knee joints because of the paint and then you have ankles that are on ball peg so you get a little bit of an ankle tilt down a slightly up and a slight rocker so all in all pretty well done and let's get him transformed so turn the head around bring the barrel up to cover the face turn the handle down and then you want to turn the top part of the body around so that the back of the head is on the same side as the trigger Where's the trigger? Bring the arms up so that the shoulder pads face outward on the ball peg. And then rotate the arms around accordingly so that the tab on the forearm plugs into the bicep on both sides. Now for the legs, you want to rotate at the shin or the knee rather. Rotate them 180. You can plug them together and then fold them back around onto... Uh, the, the back of the figure, or the gun rather, and then you can actually, I think, plug the back of the barrels into them. But uh, I'll see if I can get it cleaned up, but that's basically it, and then we'll show him holding it. Which, once again, he does just fine. All right, finally, let's talk about the figure. So the head sculpt, in my opinion, is nothing short of amazing. It looks perfect. I love it. And the paint on it is clean, the white, red, and gray. And then the head armor, like the helmet, is painted as well with the silver and then the uh, silver. Am I an idiot? And somebody's like, yep. The purple and then the different shade of purple metallic. The rabbit ears obviously do articulate a bit. I like mine as far apart as possible. And then we have a hinge swivel, which you know is my preferred way of doing business. You can get up to there, which is great. A good bit down, which is important. And the swivel. Fantastic. Now, the chest. This is begging for a Decepticon symbol, isn't it? But we have the translucent orange. We have the painted chest, abdomen. It's covered in paint. Beautiful. It does have one shortcoming, though. It's a ratcheted waist swivel, but in order to actually activate it, you have to pull this piece out. But when you do so, it has a tendency to come all the way out. So it's not the best engineered thing, but it does work. So I don't know. Take that as you will. There are some, some tight tolerances on this guy. Now, you know my opinion. It's better to have um, a tight tolerance than a loose tolerance. But there it is. So the silver paint and the purple paint look great. Moving on to the arm. Very interesting. We have a hinge here at the chest so you can get the arm all the way up, which is great. Then you have a ratcheted swivel that gets you the arm all the way around, if I can get his bunny ears out of the way, which is also great. And I think that's it. So that should get you everything you want. And then we have the same paint through and through. Bicep swivel, that's tolerance perfectly, by the way. We have a double hinged elbow and the joint is actually has that metallic flecked plastic so it gives a finished look throughout and then two shades of purple on the arm all fantastic then we have the wrist which swivels and hinges uh, out you can get it to hinge in a bit i believe too you just got to get the thumb out of the way not the greatest angle and it's much better to have it hinge inward than outward i feel but at least we got something we have a hinge at the uh, at the thumb and then we have a ball peg where it connects. So using both, you should be able to get all the fingers where you want. For the fingers, they are individually articulated and they are pinned, which is my preferred way of doing business. Base knuckle, second knuckle, third knuckle. So pretty much done flawlessly. Whenever you do this, it does have a tendency to make the hand a little big. That's a question to, up to you as to whether or not you're willing to sacrifice engineering for sculpt. I can't answer that for you as much as I would like to. Same for the other side thighs once again we have this metallic white looks great they have universal joints perfectly done they're tensioned for the full monty ratcheted for the full van dam there is this hinge here but it's awfully tight and i'm not going to force it then we have a thigh swivel built around the universal that should get you everything that your little heart desires we have die cast knees that are ratcheted for a double hinge no issues there and then we have striking 
uh, purple translucent there on top of the purple metallic and a different shade of purple metallic painted. This thing is covered head to toe. Truly beautiful. And then we have the ankles. We have a toe tilt basically down, a little tight. And then we have a rocker. I will say I wish there was a heel spur that flipped out because sometimes when you're posing them in the more dynamic poses, balancing can become an issue. You can use the toe tilt to kind of get you that leverage to make it work, but it's worth noting. And then on the back, pretty much clean as a whistle, and I got QC30. You know, I always try to show you guys that. It's funny, uh, shout out to Sam's Formers. Uh, I said, did anybody ever get a one? And he hit me up, he actually got a one, so that's pretty awesome. And that's this guy. And that for me, ladies and gents, is just kind of the stuff that dreams are made of. I talk about these moments from time to time, like when you get your fifth Dinobot. It's something about completing the team that just always looks great. Big payoff, and I think they look outstanding together. And there's kind of just some Cyclonuses through the years. Good grief, it makes that MMC one look bad. Let's get him transformed. Bunny ears together, turn the head 180. Open the chest up and bring it down. Push the shoulder pieces 90 degrees to the back. And it's a little challenging. So use caution when you do it. But once you do it, all of that will open up for you. And then you wanna bring this whole assembly here that's in the middle up. And in order to do so, pull it out a bit and then you just have to kind of bring it out of this cavity. And once again, use caution. But if you clear this space between the head and the body and be careful of these two pieces that poke out, you should be all right. And I say that and then I am anything but. This is about how far up you need it to be. Flip this piece out here, which is a little challenging and then you can use this to slide out that entire piece which is another thing that doesn't feel great when you do it but I haven't had any issue you can then extend your nose cone straighten all that out and you want this piece extended as well to there on the back side close these pieces up so that they line up properly and peg them in and then collapse the nose cone. Then bring the nose cone all the way up so that the head goes into this space and then slide the head down uh, at the neck. And that should allow this to all close up pretty seamlessly. And on the opposite side, you can take this plate and move that into position. There's two tabs here in the back you want to rotate those out and the whole assembly that we've been fighting with for the backpack you need to rotate down make sure the arms are in line and then we're going to square it up as soon as we get this into location and this can be frustrating and it's just the amount of sort of moving pieces that's there but we're gonna lay that down as flat as we can. Rotate the chest down on the double hinge and plug that into the double bars that are on the arms. On the opposite side, you wanna get the canopy or can of peas in line with these squares and push down. That one went no problem and there's the second. Rotate at the forearm in the center so that the wing comes to the back and you might have to slide, you had to slide the wing down as well. And, but this part of the forearm with the little clip is facing in line with this back section because that will eventually plug in. Same for the other side, sliding the wing down and then rotating so that it's at the back. You can then pretty much sort your wing out, untabbing it from here. And when you get to this section, you'll have to push this piece down, which is tight. Tell you what, they know how to take the fun out of something. Plug this one in, and then this piece comes out on this double hinge to wrap around the edges. And we can show that again, untabbing from here, and then we're going to slide this piece down, wrapping this other part of the wing on a double hinge around, plugging in, and then rotating this piece on a double hinge down and around. With the elbows bent out of the way, rotate your foot 
towards the bottom so that you can peel back this entire section. At that point, you can rotate the thruster out and inside there is a small peg that needs to come up. Then finish rotating it out and then this is where it tends to fall apart on me. So rotate Combiner Wars the leg down and you have to make sure that this is perfect and then bring this piece around while shoving the feet up inside and it is easier said than done but I made it look fairly simple but you're not out of the woods yet pop this piece open rotate this entire section down and then rotate this entire section back where it was and then close this up which will tab back in and you now have two tabs additional tabs rather available to plug in the legs can we do this side as smoothly fingers cross bring the foot down rotate it inward allowing the thruster to be rotated outward and while doing so move this tab up which is inside the thruster at this point we want to combine our wars the leg down and as we do so we want to fold the foot back in come on girl and bring this other piece around and I made it look easy but it can give you problems I'm here to tell you peel off this top flap that's on the back of the calf that's up towards the top rotate it inward and then that whole section will split in half come back around on itself and plug back in then you want to tab the legs together and then you want to tab this back plate back into the thighs and hope that those little pegs have not come out of alignment. Finish off your wings by bringing your elbow back and locking the purple square into the section. Make sure the fist is folded down so that the fingers are facing towards the inside of the jet and then you can tab the entire forearm into this tab here and then bring your thruster around to the other side and tab it in and you might have to adjust it a bit but that's the basics of it then do the same thing for the other side feel free to manipulate the wing Bring the elbow back around. You have to bend it slightly so that the purple piece lines up properly. Move your thruster out of the way. Bring the hand down and plug into the side of the jet. Then move your thruster around and do your best to get that lined up. And I may have to do that off camera as well. It's just hard to see it from this vantage point. And then your final steps, there are two parts to the wing that are hiding underneath. Flip those around to the back, and then there are two panels that hide right behind the cockpit pit. Flip those around and down in. I'll clean it up. We'll take a look at it. There it is. Rolls like a champ with landing gear. There's one that hides up here, and then there's two that hide up down at the bottom. And I'm actually having a hard time getting them to close now. I'm not messing with it anymore. So I think it's beautiful, but let's talk about it, what everybody's talking about, and that's this piece. Uh, look, I've heard tons of stuff regarding it, right? I've heard it's all about these flaps that are in the tail right here didn't help me as you can see it doesn't sit 100 percent flush then i heard you can shave pegs off and all this look i'm not doing any of that if you are more power to you but i'm not taking a blade to my 160 dollar toy not happening not on my watch i got enough problems with just my hands you think i'm taking a knife to this unit you're out of your mind anyway i think it is beautiful though 
the paint comes through, the whole thing is painted. I love the little like bit here at the end. I think it is absolutely amazing. That being said, I will never, and I mean ever, put this in this mode again. Somehow, Fans Toys figured out a way to take all of the fun out of this thing. Imagine a figure as a recipe. Hi, welcome back to another edition of Cooking with Fans Toys. We're gonna add a lot of paint. Ooh. Add in the same amount of sculpt. Ooh. Add in some height and some accessories. And then add fun. Get back the f out of here. And gimmick wise, the cockpit does raise up. And there it is with Tiger Tracks. Final thoughts. Let's talk about the negatives. There are a few. I'd like to first start off with the problems that the screw gave me in the back of the head. I would have really liked to take some pictures in the IDW mode, but I 100% stripped that screw. And I didn't put my, I know people accuse me of having the gorilla paws and you are correct. If it means anything to you, your girl digs them. But I didn't put a lot of force or tension on it and I used a variety of different screwdrivers and none of them worked. They should have probably hooked me up the same way that Keith does with a little third party screwdriver, which as you know, happens to be my favorite third party accessory that was perfectly fit for those screws or not put them in with the most heaviest handed fella they could find, one or the other. Secondly, the engineering. Look, there's an element of beauty to it and it's amazing how it all works. But that being said, it is one of the least fun transformations I've ever messed with. I'm often critical of fans toys in their engineering because I think that's the weakest link in their designs. And this one is no different. This is not a let me see it in this mode and then let me see it in this mode. This is a let me see it in this mode and then let me sit down with an abacus, a map and a compass and figure out how this thing goes into jet mode. And of course with the engineering thing comes that cockpit issue. Not really a big deal to me, but I know it's a big deal to some. It would have been nice to have some weapon storage options and maybe they have it. I just couldn't bear to look at the jet anymore after I'd wasted an hour and a half putting it into that mode. So it may have it, but I didn't see any that obviously stood out as possibilities to store those weapons. Plenty of positives though. The sculpt is absolutely 100% breathtakingly beautiful. It is a gorgeous figure with tons of shelf appeal. It is painted from head to toe and if it's not paint, it's decoed plastic. The materials feel great and it is a stressful engineering and a stressful transformation and it holds up under it. Something needs to be said for that. The presence is second to none. It cleans up like a champ. The alt mode is beautiful and in my opinion, so beautiful that the cockpit issue doesn't even bother me. Great materials, the plastic feels fantastic and there's tons of die cast to boot. So it's a strong recommend from me if you're more of a display guy. If you're a guy like to flip it back and forth I'm not sure you're gonna enjoy this one unless you like stuff that's extremely involved which this is so I hope that helps and thanks for listening thanks for watching until next time take care